Hey guys, hope you all are doing great. I know it has been a while since I posted anything on this channel. My original plan was to take a small break from YouTube and then get back to working on a new series. But one thing led to another and the short break turned into a whole year. I guess such is life. But now yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. So welcome to yet another flame game development series. This time we are going to make Ski Master a top-down vertical scroller about skiing. Let's first go through a very rough demo of how the game will look like at the end. So, once a player starts the game, they'll get a simple level selection menu. And after selecting a level, they'll be dropped into the actual game, where they control this player character using keyboard controls. And as one would expect, the character auto-accelerates and player can only steer it left or right. As for the gameplay, we will add some ramps for the player to jump off from and some collectible snowmen spread along the skiing path. I haven't yet finalized how the new levels will be unlocked, but off the top of my head, maybe we can hook it with a 3 star ranking system, where the stars can be calculated based on number of snowmen collected or the amount of time it took to complete the current level. But that's a huge maybe. It all depends on how the series goes. So, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyways, that is the high level overview of what you can expect at the end of this series. If all this sounds interesting to you, let's get started. So, let's begin by creating a brand new Flutter project. I'll use the empty application template to keep the project to a bare minimum. I'll name this project as Ski Master. You can name yours whatever you feel like. And once the project is ready, I'll rename this My App widget to Ski Master App. Okay, now let's head over to pub.dev and get hold of packages that we'll need for this project. First one is obviously Flame. As of recording this video, 1.9.1 is the latest Flame release. So I'll add that in the pubspec YAML of my project. And notice that I'm removing the caret sign from the version to make sure that PubGet doesn't accidentally pull a newer version of Flame in future. If a new version of Flame gets released while the series is ongoing, I'll try to upgrade to it as soon as possible and include the upgrade steps in these videos. For releases that will happen after the end of this series, make sure to check the latest code on the GitHub repository of this project. Link will be in the description. Okay, so the next package that we need is Flame Tiled. This package will help us in rendering our levels. Basically, it is a bridge package that takes care of loading the tile map files created using a tool called Tiled. If you don't know about this tool, don't worry. I'll try and explain all the features of Tiled when we'll start using it. For now, let's add this dependency in our pub spec. Now that we have added all the required dependencies, let's set up the directories where all the image and level assets will live. For this, I'll create an assets folder in the project root. And within this assets folder, let's create an images and a tiles folder. As their name indicates, all the image assets will be stored in images and all the tiled assets will be stored in tiles. Be extra careful when creating these folders because this is the standard folder structure that Flame expects when it tries to load the assets. So if the names do not match, you'll get some errors while loading the assets. That being said, there are ways to make Flame use custom folder structure if needed. I won't be covering that in these videos, but if you want to know more, you can find the details in their official docs. So once these folders are ready, we'll have to add them to the assets section in our pub spec so that they get bundled with our Flutter builds. Now, let's get hold of the image assets that we'll need for this project. And for that, let's head over to Kenny.nl. Kenny is probably the best person when it comes to free and most permissive game development assets. You'll find all the assets under the asset section on this site. Here, we are looking for the one named Tiny Ski. You can also get to it by searching for Ski. So just go ahead and download this asset pack. Once you extract it, you should get some files and folders like this. In the tiled folder, you'll find a sample tile map with its corresponding tileset file. We don't need these files for the final game, 
but we can use them to quickly test our project setup. Then in the tilemap folder, you'll find two images. These images contain all the sprites that we need. Both of these essentially contain the same data. The only difference is that one of them has a spacing of one pixel around each sprite, while the other one does not. For rest of the series, we should be fine with just the packed one. But since we want to test our setup using the sample tile map and it uses the image with spacing, we'll have to copy both of these to our project. So I'll copy and paste them in the asset slash images folder in our project. Next, let's copy over the sample map and sample sheet into asset slash tiles folder. Now, before we can start loading this tile map in our game, we'll need to update the path to the image file that this tile map needs. To open and edit this tile map, you'll need the tiled editor. And you can get the download links for this editor from their official website. Once tiled is installed, you should be able to open any valid TMX file by double clicking on it or just drag dropping it into tiled. So let's open the sample tile map in tiled. Now, depending on your existing tile settings, OS, and theme, this interface might look a bit different. But essentially, these error boxes that you see is the area where we should be able to see the whole map. Right now, this is not able to display anything because tiled is not able to locate the tilemap.png file. It expects it at a particular location relative to the TMX file. But since we moved it to our folder structure, it is not able to find that file. To fix this, just open this open tile set button. We need to do this because the part to the image file is actually stored in the tile set. Basically, tile set files store reference to image files and their layout information to slice them into individual tiles. Here, again select the missing reference error and then click locate file. Then just navigate to the tilemap.png that we stored in images folder. Once you do that, you will be able to see the tiles in the tile set. Just save this file and go to the sample map. Now you should be able to see the contents of this map correctly. Now we are all set and can test this sample map in the game. So let's close the tiled editor and head back to our project code. Here, first I'll create a subfolder under lib called game. Most of our flame related code will live under this folder. Next, let's create a game.dart file under this new folder. This will contain our main game class, the entry point to our game world. I'll name this as Ski Master Game and extend it from Flame Game class. Flame Game is a class provided by Flame that implements a standard game loop and takes care of a lot of the common game object management stuff. Essentially, it stores a tree of objects which can be updated and rendered on every frame of the game. These objects are called components. The concept is roughly similar to Godot's node or Unity's game objects. So, to make our Ski Master game render the sample map, we'll need to first load it from the assets. Loading things from assets can be a relatively heavy operation. So, if our game tries to load big assets synchronously, the whole application can appear to be frozen for a couple of seconds. To avoid this, Flame Game allows us to override the onload method. Depending on your needs, you can override it as normal method that returns a void or you can override it as an async method that returns future of void. So in our case, I'll go with the second option as I want the sample map to load asynchronously. Inside the onload, I'll create a tiled component using the load method. This method requires file name of the TMX file along with the desired tile size of the map. So for the file name, we can pass in sample map.tmx and for the tile size i'll provide a 16 by 16 vector tool now this tile size is something that depends on the tile width and tile height properties of your map for example if i open the map in tiled again you can see that the tile width and tile height are both set to 16 and that is why i used a 16 by 16 vector tool technically the destination file size can be anything as long as it's an uniform multiple of the values from the map. I'll show it once we get the map rendering correctly in the game. 
Next, you might have noticed that the tilecomponent.load method is actually an async method that returns the loaded tile component in future. So, to wait for the future to complete, I'll add the await keyword here and then store the returned object in a final variable called map. Now, this map is essentially a component that our flame game can update and render every frame. And to make it do that, we just need to add it as a child of our game class by calling the add method. And since add is an async as well, I'll wait for it to complete before this method ends. That is essentially all the code that we need in our game class right now. To make our Ski Master app widget start displaying the Ski Master game, we'll have to use a special widget from Flame package called Game Widget. This Game Widget takes care of displaying a given Flame game in the Flutter widget tree. Since this is a simple project, I don't think we'll need any complex widget setup in our material app. So, I'll just replace this whole scaffold with the game widget. And to avoid managing an instance of flame game myself, I'll use the dot controlled constructor. If I were to use the normal constructor, I would have needed to also store the game instance outside the build method so that the whole game does not get recreated again and again on every Flutter rebuild. This constructor needs a game factory callback that it can invoke to generate a new instance of the game. So here, I'll just pass in ski master game dot new. This is as good as writing an anonymous function that returns a new instance of ski master game. Okay, now let's build and run this project to see if everything is set up correctly. And yes, as you can see, we do get the sample map rendering correctly in the game window. As promised, let's see what happens if we use a different destination tile size while loading the tiled component. I'll change it from 16 by 16 to 32 by 32 and then hot refresh the game. And as one would expect, the map is still rendering but just a bit bigger in size. This is exactly twice as large in this case. I hope this explains why I said it can be anything in uniform multiples of the original values from the map. Just to drive the point home, let's change it to 32 by 64 and hot reload. Now you can see that the map looks messed up because we tried to scale the map non-uniformly. In most of the cases, you will be rendering the map in the same tile size as set in the TMX file. But it is always good to know that there are ways to control the size of your rendered tile in the game. But anyways, that is all for this video. I hope you were able to follow along. As always, all the source code for this project will be open source and will be available as a GitHub repository linked in the description. Links to my Discord server and other social handles is also in the description. So feel free to reach out if you want to. And lastly, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to show your support and maybe share it with your friends who are interested in game development. I hope to see you in the next one.